and I got my jab sharp and my timing and things like that. And I worked at it very hard. has worked at it very, very hard. He holds the gold medal, world competition, featherweight division, Havana, Cuba, 1974. He has grown up into a lightweight. I think you're going to like what you see in this young man. Tremendous character, tremendous courage. The opponent, Yukio Sagawa of Japan, the action in round one. Mr. Park of Korea, the referee. Watch the quickness of Davis's hands and feet. See if he too doesn't remind you of Ali. See that left jab? See that left jab again? Keep watching this young man in action. The moves of the body. He slipped that punch from the smaller Korean. Big advantage in reach. A caution, you must hit with the white portion of the glove. Davis did not pronate the blow. Once again, Olympic boxing competition, 20-point plus scoring system per round, scored by five international judges at ringside. By the way, don't ever underestimate a fighter from the Orient. They're very good. As you can see, Howard Davis putting on an Ali type of show with the feet. The shuffle. He's just having too much fun out there. Get down to work. This is the Olympics, Howard. Do your job. Although I must say the crowd is loving. Judging by Sugar Ray Leonard, Davey Armstrong, and now Howard Davis, the United States young fighters have really taken to the whole boxing pattern of Muhammad Ali. Slipping punches with his head, the hands down at the sides. The Japanese fighter hangs in there. Good left got in there by Davis. There a left and a right combination. There again, the long arms and a miss. First round action, Howard Davis against Yukio Sagawa of Japan. Davis, by the way, does is not a knockout punch. Though, as he has grown into the lightweight division, he is hitting harder than ever before. And he has not yet, like Ali used to be, he has not yet ever been cut. We've got 40 seconds left in round one. Davis is the kind of fighter Olympic judges like because of the skills, the finesse, the technique, even as you see it there. The ability to stay away from the opponent. You how do you like that? With all of the talk about Davis, he's been playing too much. And a quick right by Sagawa got into Davis, floored him, and the mandatory eight count. That'll teach him a lesson. Now he'll go to work. Ten seconds left in round one. You can't take anybody for granted in the boxing competition. Now he's going to work. Covering up, he finds a tough little Japanese opponent. for round two, the action begins. Notwithstanding the quick knockdown scored by the sudden right by Yukio Sakawa, the Japanese fighter against Davis, in my view, under Olympic boxing scoring, Davis won the round anyway. However, that remains to be seen when the outcome of the fight is told. But Davis now knows he's got to fight. He's got to go to work. No more dancing. No more Ali mimicking. The little fella's coming in at him. In the rankings of the lightweights going into the competition, the two go favorites are Davis of the United States. There's a good right. Now he's trying to clean up on Sagawa. A good right set up Sagawa. Now it's Davis all over. But he's got to stay over. Covering up in Ali fashion with those gloves in front of the face. 
wild, unorthodox swinger is Sagawa, the kind of fighter who can make you look bad. Anything can happen in an amateur fight. A good right scored by Davis. Da Davis and Simon Kudev of Romania are the favorites in the lightweight division. But Davis is having a good tussle of it with this wild, unorthodox Yukio Sagawa of Japan. There, a combination got in. We've had one knockdown in the fight. Scored by Sagawa, suddenly out of nowhere after Davis had been completely dominant. Now in this round, Davis is cleaning up on Sagawa, but Davis is not a knockout puncher. We've got a minute, 20 seconds left. In this, the second round, Mr. Park of Korea, the referee. This reminds me of a fight in Munich in 72. Jesse Valdez, then fighting for the United States, classy, stylish boxer, against a little wild fellow from Peru who gave Jesse all he could handle. Jesse finally dominating to win the decision. See what happens when the Japanese fighter comes in, aggressively drops his gloves, he's wide open, and Davis can clean up on him. This fight has turned out much better than anticipated. Howard Davis perhaps getting a lesson in overconfidence. Japanese fighter keeps coming. He'll wrestle, he'll do anything. Break, box, Mr. Boxer. Break and box. The left gets in there, then a right. There are horses for courses, as I've often said, and styles for fighters. But under any circumstances, a good left and then a good right by Davis against Yukio Sakawa of Japan. Under any circumstances, this is a tough kind of fight at a fight. Just as Tony Galeno, that's the end of the round, used to be tough, but it's a much better fight. Behind me, the live scene of downtown Montreal this evening. Right now, a live basketball game going on. The Soviet Union against the home team, Canada. Let's check in quickly for a report on that from Kurt Gowdy and Bill Russell. This is a halftime score. The Soviet Union very impressively leading Canada 51-31. It looks very much we're going to have a rematch for the gold medal between Russia and the United States. The United States defeated Yugoslavia handily with a second half drive tonight. And uh, Russia was supposed to have a fairly difficult game with Canada, but the, the same old performers are back. Alexander Belov, who got the winning basket against American 72, Sergei Belov, and Armazado top. This is a very fine Russian team. America knows it, and that's the story here of Olympic basketball. And now let's go on to more boxing. All right, the warning bell for round three, third and final round coming up. Howard Davis, United States against Yukio Sagawa of Japan. Surprisingly good fight, in my view. The Muhammad Ali-like Howard Davis is clearly ahead in the points, but he did get knocked down by a sudden right from the unorthodox and stylish Japanese fighter, who is nevertheless rough, wild, dangerous because of that knockdown. But that knockdown brought Davis to his senses. He had been playing too much. Now, apparently, Pat Nappy has told him to move, to stay away, not to take any risks. Get the decision in the bank. Move on to the second round. Flicks the left jab, Davis. Wants to stay out of reach. Again, the left. See him dancing, the gloves at the side. Father took him, he said, to see him over. 8KA, Cassius Clay. The fans are booing Davis. They want him to get in there and mix it up. But no. No, no, Davis is playing the Ali game. He's got to be a little bit careful. Sometimes you can do that too long and the referee can disqualify you for what we call passive defense. That's what happened to Ingemar Johansson in 1952 in Helsinki, Finland against the American Eddie Sanders. Oh, he's better start fighting. His coach better start talking to him. It was this kind of booing that brought on the disqualification in Helsinki. Keep that left flicking. Make some kind of offense. I don't like this at all. I don't think it's well advised on the part of the American coach, Pat Mappy, whose instructions Davis is obviously following. Get in there and get in some blows. 
We've only got a minute left of the fight, and what had been an excellent fight has turned into a rather dull exhibition. All tactics and strategy in the third round. The Japanese fighter hasn't been able to get to Davis at all. Wow. The fans are booing Davis. So Davis got in there, landed a blow. No question, this is the coach's strategy. Instructions to Howard Davis. 30 seconds left in the bout. The left gets in there. He flicks away outside. Well, we'll have to see what the judges do. I wonder how they're taking all of this. You could cost yourself a round, it seems to me, with this strategy. No aggression whatsoever. Sure, the crowd is yelling, fight him, fight him, fight him. We approach the end of the fight. Just three seconds left. That's it. Well, the crowd didn't like that at all, and I must say, I don't blame them. I believe in tactics, and I believe in strategy, but you take a terrible risk in Olympic boxing when you do that. Davis was clearly ahead on points going into the third round, in my judgment. However, the officials will have to decide that. But remember, under Olympic boxing rules, a knockdown is supposed to be worth no more than a single hit. And certainly, Davis had the big advantage in the hits. But just as certainly, Pat Naffy, talking to him strongly between the second and third rounds, told him to execute the defensive strategy that he did, to keep moving in Ali-like fashion, to flick the left occasionally, to stay away from the opponent, not take any risks. Yukio Sagawa of Japan gave a good account of himself. However unorthodox the style, however unpolished the fighter, he gave a good account of himself. We'll be back in a moment with the decision. All right, the decision about to come. The fans still booing Howard Davis because of that third round strategy of not really fighting, just dancing, an occasional flick of the left. But not the Howard Davis of the first two rounds, despite the quick knockdown that was scored against him in the very first round, when Yukio Sagawa came from nowhere with a right that got Le through. Gagnant, au point, 5 0 dans le point bleu, Howard Davis, états -Unis. Yep, Davis the winner. He goes on to the second round. He is a beautifully skilled boxer, but I think they're going to have to take another look at that kind of strategy that was displayed tonight when Davis did virtually no fighting in the third and final round. So Howard Davis 